Hi everybody, Mr. Farmer here, and today we're going to talk about the AP Macroeconomics Chain Reaction. It's a worksheet um, I came up with a little bit ago, and pretty much what it does is it asks you to go through all the connections between the different graphs. This is kind of Unit 5 from College Board, but we're going to go through all the graphs, the connections, and everything else. This is usually some of that students struggle with. Um, so let's get started. So you can kind of see I have, I have two sides same concept but they'd go through different um orientation different different connections so i'm going to start with this first one i'll kind of scoot, scoot in so we're going to start with the drawing expansion and contraction gap you can go either way um, i'll go ahead and draw an expansionary gap and this is going to be the a s a d let me see if i can make that a little bit thinner there we go let me do that Okay, so you got the ASAD graph. So really quickly, you got price level, real GDP on the Y and X axis. You want your LRAS because that's going to tell us uh, what full employment is. So that's going to be Y full employment. Um, and we'll go ahead and do uh, that. We have a uh, an expansionary gap. What that means <clears throat> is our current output is actually let or actual or our potential output and the lrs is going to be the potential real gdp that'll be at full employment natural unemployment all that if we are a, have an expansion gap or inflation gap our actual output which is asad is going to be larger than our current so this would be a positive gdp gap there and click on label asad and so here we have our current price level so our current price level, our current output, because our current output's greater than our potential or where the LRS is, we call that an expansionary gap. So after you've done that, then you get to go to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and kind of follow this next slide over here. So what fiscal policy <coughs> would you use? So fiscal policies are going to be, um, that's going to be, changes in government spending or changes in tax rates now we are going to assume that the fiscal policy is called discretionary so it is at the discretion of the voting party u.s congress or whatever country you have to be in um non-discretionary or automatic stabilizers that's a different conversation we're not going to worry about that so because we're expansionary, again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to resolve this. So how to resolve this? We want there to be a cool down. We're currently producing too much. So what can we do? Well, for government spending, we can decrease the government spending. Or for tax rates, you can increase tax rates. Why? Because again, the aggregate demand curve, aggregate demand equals GDP and the GDP is C plus I plus G plus net exports so if the government spends less money you spent less if there's an increase in tax rates <clears throat> probably in household okay uh, person consumption um, uh, taxes person has a, uh, taxes that's going to decrease the ability the disposable income and so we have a decrease and a decrease if it was a business tax could decrease up here anyways overall that's going to decrease the GDP which leads to a decrease in the aggregate demand so from there following this arrow how would those impact the ASAD well let me go ahead and quickly redraw what we have just right over here so we had an expansionary gap originally and so and here's our current output and then we have our full employment output and price level and all that kind of stuff for labeling sake just assume i did all that okay so we have a decrease in the aggregate demand because of these fiscal policies up here on the top left so we have a decrease in the aggregate demand and by the miracle of academia it's going to go us back all the way over to here because of again mostly the decrease in the household or the decrease in government spending okay so now we're over here at y 
put AD1, so I'll just say Y1. Great, we are at full employment and rejoice. Okay. But here's the other thing. What if instead of going from uh, fiscal policy to the ASAD, what if you did fiscal policy over to the loanable funds? Now we call this the crowding out effect. So let's kind of talk about this for a second. So crowding out effect is the idea that if there's an increase in government spending, so that's going to be the thing that we're going to be focusing on, increase in government spending means that there's an increase that the of the money that the government borrowed. Okay, most governments, maybe all governments, are in debt. And so whenever they have to increase their spending, they must borrow more money. And so the thing that my students always get confused at, if you're one of my students, hopefully after this you don't, is that on the loanable funds graph, quantity of loanable funds, this is real interest rates on the y-axis. Have my demand curve, and my supply curve, and I'll do an R and a Q. So if the government increases their spending, that means they borrow money. Demand is the use of money. When the government borrows money, they are using money. They're not creating it. They can't print it. That's going to be the monetary policies. They're increasing the use of money. So what's that mean? Let's get another color on here. Great. So we have an increase in the demand for money caused by this increase in government spending. So increase in interest rates and increase in the quantity. So that is called the crowding out effect. Definitely something we're going to want to no. Okay. From there, you can go one or two route. You can go a whole bunch of different routes. I ask you to do a couple different things. One is the loan of funds to the 4X. We'll do that in a little bit. Or the loan of funds to the ASAD. So, for the ASAD. So, this is based off of the increase to the real interest rates. That was from the crowding out effect. I'll zoom out at the very end to see all the mess I've made of this. Okay, so we are again drawing an ASAD graph. Now this typically does not deal with um, being above and below full employment. You could definitely do that if it asks you to. Are you moving further or whatever else way it is? So this question from College Bro would be, based off of the changes to the real interest rates. So we're going to figure out the government was trying to increase spending. Based on the change of the real interest rates only, how that in fact impact here? Well, again, our AD is C plus I plus G. C plus I plus G plus the net exports. Well, if it's now more expensive to borrow money, increase real interest rates, that's going to cause businesses most likely to decrease their borrowing. They're not going to borrow as much money. Now here you can go two different ways. The way that I think is a better call is this. <clears throat> because the interest rates, and this would be the interest rate to borrow money, is more expensive, businesses are going to not buy new machines. So no new machines for me. I'm not going to buy capital. <clears throat> which means that's the decrease in the aggregate demand. I think that's the most straightforward way to talk about this. And I think that makes the most sense. However, <clears throat> excuse me, if it happens to say, how would this change from interest rates? How would this change something like, uh, let, let me see if I can do it this way. I'm running out of space. Okay. Based on the change of interest rates, how would that impact something like economic growth. Well, economic growth is mostly like LRAS is pretty much what it's talking about. So what that is saying is that because it's more expensive to borrow money, that people are not going to borrow as much. And so again, there's no new machines for me. What would that mean? It means that the typically at the current interest rate, I would have as an owner, I would have bought this amount of machines. But because the interest rates are more expensive, 
I'm not going to buy those machines. And since I'm not going to buy those machines, my ability to produce has decreased. Now, this is pretty specific to a question on economic growth from College Board. Okay. With that said, I've also seen it done where they'll ask, hey, how would this change interest rate? How did it impact the real output or real GDP? And one thing you note is that no matter what, if I'm at this point, or at this point, no matter what, my real output will have always decreased. So that's kind of a nice way of talking about those things. So that is the real interest rate and the loanable funds. Now, how about real interest rates to the 4X market? Okay, here, here's the quick, quick takeaway. Here's what you need to know for this. If interest rates, doesn't matter which one, if interest rates, that would be nominal or real, if nominal rates increased in country X, this is always country X, in country X, X's currency is going to appreciate. That's what it's going to be. If you're not sure why, I have a Forex video. You can definitely watch that as well. So first off, what do I need to do for this graph? It's going to be I, foreign currency. So I guess this will be U.S. Uh, so I'll do it for U.S. So foreign currency, FC generic per dollar. What that means is how many foreign currencies does it take to purchase one U.S. dollar? So whatever the second number is, we're going to hold that as a one value. If you go online, you see this differently. College Board typically sets the second number to be the standardized value. So we got our demand curve and our supply curve. So what are we going off of? We're coming off of in the increase in the real interest rates. So what's going to happen? Because the higher real interest rates, foreign investors are going to want to purchase U.S. dollars in order to invest into the U.S. financial marketplace. They're going to want to get buy these new bonds, which all of a sudden have higher interest rates. So the bond market, the newly issued bond markets, are going to be better. They want to give the loans to the United States. How do they do that? They first need to purchase the U.S. dollar. So it's going to increase in the demand. It's also an argument that now U.S. consumers are going to go and seek, seek out loans from other places because now it's really expensive to get loans domestically. Okay, so they go get a loan from whatever this foreign country is. When they eventually get that foreign currency, what are they going to do? They're going to transfer it back into their domestic currency. So no matter what, if the interest rates increases, there is going to be an increase in demand for that currency. So what's that mean? Well, originally, I like to do it simple. One foreign currency would cut it for $1. Now, because it's gone up, one thing I mentioned, this should be quantity of dollars. Whatever is down here, that's dictating what this currency is about. Because this is it from foreign currencies. We're talking about supply and demand of dollars. So you need to make sure you know which one it is. Well, again, the dollar is going to be held stable. So that means if it goes up, that's like two foreign currencies. So the U.S. dollar has appreciated because now the U.S. dollar can buy twice as many foreign currencies as it used to. Or another saying this is the foreign currency has depreciated. So the U.S. dollar appreciating. So how does the U.S. dollar go from the Forex to the ASAD, which is going to be kind of our last jump over here. So we, once again, you're going to draw an ASAD. Just get comfortable. You're going to draw them all the time. Again, I'm not going to worry about being above or below full employment right now. So because the U.S. dollar appreciated how is that going to impact things well let's kind of think about it this way so originally it was one foreign currency per one u.s dollar and then it went to two foreign currencies to one u.s dollar well again we're talking about the c plus i plus g plus the net export that's going to be the part that we're talking about as far as the ad for this so at first i'll say that at uh, A and B. At part A, um, you know, they, 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 they had a trade relationship. Fantastic. Here's the thing. As soon as this occurred, uh, the U.S. 
well, they can now buy twice as much stuff for the same U.S. dollar. So, does that mean? They're going to buy things like twice the amount of imports. They're buying twice as much stuff, right? At the same time, that foreign country, it takes twice as much for them to buy the stuff from the United States. So, maybe they're going to buy half of what they used to. So, we got a half minus two. What's this mean? The overall aggregate demand... GDP. Overall, the United States is going to import more stuff than the export because of you know, current U.S. dollars appreciate. So we have a decrease in the aggregate demand. So what's that look like? Well, draw it out. Decrease aggregate demand. And there we have it. So there will be a decrease in the price level and a decrease in the real output. All right. So uh, I would do a couple more parts of this, but let me kind of go over here. So that's going to be on the expansionary side of ASAD to fiscal policy, to um, the implementation of the fiscal policy, to loanable funds, to the forex market, to everything else. So there we go. Next time, I'll look at the monetary policies and how that would affect things like the money market graph and the ASAD and the forex and everything else. And then at some point, we'll go over and do the other parts as well. You can see it goes in just kind of a different order. Okay, until next time.